anytime we talk about men and women in general, obviously we're going to be making some generalities that aren't going to literally apply to every single individual. However, I am confident that while there might be some individual men who are not attracted to women with these types of qualities, I am confident that most men are attracted and desire a woman with these four qualities. Number one, agreeableness. A man wants a woman who can co-pilot the plane with him, but he still wants to sit in the captain's seat. Now, I'm not saying a man just wants a wallflower of a woman who has no opinions and has no goals and just wants him to do everything for her. I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is that men are attracted in general to women who are high on the scale in the personality trait of agreeableness. According to one popular psychological resource, agreeableness is a personality trait that can be described as cooperative, polite, kind, and friendly. Perhaps some of you are saying in your mind, well, isn't that true of women too though? Don't women just want an agreeable man? Who doesn't want a friendly, polite, cooperative type of person? And of course, generally speaking, that is true. But let's remind ourselves of what we're really talking about here. We're talking about physical attraction, relationship attraction, and romance, not just friendship. So there is a difference because many women might say they want an agreeable man, but those are often the same women who are complaining about passive men who seem to be drifting in life, they don't have a plan, they need her to do everything. And so there's a correlation between being too agreeable and being passive as a man. So the way I would say it is that agreeableness isn't unattractive in a man for a woman. A woman isn't unattractive to an agreeable man, but that's not the quality that gets her to see the man. That's not what she's out there looking for. She's not looking for the agreeable guy. She might think she is because culture has told her to look for that friendly, nice guy. But deep down, she's looking for a man who has a plan, a man who knows where he's going in life, a man who can stand up when there's an issue. And the truth is, a man is not looking for those same qualities that I just described that a woman is looking for in a man. A man is not looking for a woman who can stand up when there's an issue or, you know, have this grand plan that he wants to follow or just has this, dr this drive to accomplish this certain business deal. A man, a strong man, isn't going to be unattracted to that. He's not going to be threatened by that but he's not out there looking for a woman like that. This may be offensive to our modern ears, but I really believe that men aren't attracted to women who come across as the leader. When it comes to relationships, men are attracted to women who want to follow. And please note how I just said that. I didn't say they're attracted to women who will follow. I said they're attracted to women who want to follow. Notice how Ephesians 5.22 puts it. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. This is a highly offensive verse to many people. But notice who this verse is directed towards. It doesn't say, husbands, make your wives submit. It doesn't say men oppress women so they follow. No, this verse is directed towards women. It's your choice as a woman to be this type of woman if you want to be. A godly man is not called to make a woman submit. God would never tell a man to do that to a woman. Rather, God designed men to be attracted to women who are happy to be this type of woman. And on a side note, for those who are offended by this word submit, I think it's worth noting what the Bible also says to husbands in Ephesians 5.25. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. A wife is called to submit as the church does to Christ, but a husband is called to die as Christ did for the church. Yes, submission is a humble sacrifice, but so is death. Figuratively and literally, a godly man is prepared to die every day for his wife. He's willing to work hard, provide, protect, and nourish her soul by giving her what she needs emotionally. 
He's willing to forsake his own desires to take care of his wife and kids. Their desires become his desires. In return, a man wants to be respected by a woman who is happy to follow him. Number two, feminine in relationship roles. It's a mistake to say that a woman should follow a man and a man should lay down his life for a woman. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says a wife should follow her husband and a husband should lay down his life for his wife. And those are two very different statements. And I'm pointing that out because when it comes to the marriage relationship, a man wants a feminine woman. So that doesn't mean a woman can't be a leader in the workplace, that she can't be well educated, that she shouldn't have career goals or have the same opportunities, obviously, as a man in the workplace. I think it's very wise for women to take advantage of having a good career because you never know what's gonna happen later in life and you wanna be able to provide for yourself and maybe one day you get divorced or something terrible happens or your husband passes away. You wanna be able to be able to provide for yourself. So I'm in no way trying to diminish those desires if you have those desires as a woman in a career and education and some field of study maybe even hobbies that are more typically masculine all that's completely fine i'm just pointing out the truth that most men are not interested in a woman's accomplishments or accolades that's not what he's out there looking for when he's looking for a woman now again like i said in the previous point this isn't going to scare him away if he's a strong man who's secure with himself. It's not a negative if she has a great career or that she's you know driven in this certain area of her life. But it is a negative if those things are carrying over into the relationship and she's projecting a masculine energy rather than a feminine energy. A man isn't looking for a woman who's just like all his guy friends but just has a woman's body. He's not looking to marry someone who's just like all the men he's around all day. Now, I'm certainly not advocating for that crude locker room talk that worldly men engage in. I'm not advocating for that. But I do think it's interesting that I've never heard a guy say, wow, look at the degrees on that woman. Or, wow, she just got promoted at work. Or, man, she's gonna be a great provider one day. Or, I just feel so safe around her. A woman is looking for those types of qualities in a man to see if he's going to be a good husband and father and provider, protector, and a lover in their relationship one day. But men are not interested in that when they're looking for a woman. Notice the types of compliment the man and woman in Song of Solomon, chapter one, verses 15 through 17, give each other. He, behold, you are beautiful, my love. Behold, you are beautiful. Your eyes are doves. She, behold, you are beautiful, my beloved, truly delightful. Our couch is green. The beams of our house are cedar. Our rafters are pine. Say what you want, but it would be odd if these compliments were reversed. But a man describing a woman's eyes like a dove make a lot of sense. A dove is a gentle, beautiful creature. Every man wants a woman to look at him in this way. And notice what the woman is complimenting him about. She's comparing him to a strong house. Every woman wants a man who can make her feel safe, like she's protected in a beautiful home. All that to say, men are attracted to women who are feminine in relationships. Number three, relationally selective. Many modern guys will complain about how choosy women are, but these are the same guys who are also complaining about how sexually promiscuous women are nowadays too. Worldly men are very confused in the fact that they want a pure woman, they're attracted, to a woman who's not sleeping around with a bunch of guys, but they also want to sleep with all the women. They want to have sex. They want a sexually pure woman, but they want to have sexual sin with this woman. And so 
they're obviously very confused and they're looking for something that can't exist because how can you be living a sexually pure life if you're having sexual sin with someone? All that to say, don't date worldly guys. They're very confused. Now, I wanna take a step back and clarify what I'm not saying. I'm not advocating for this purity culture type of view of women, which in general basically values virgins more than other women who have had sex. And it causes men and women to just use a different scale of value. And it really puts women on a pedestal sexually. And again, just creates a unbiblical value on a woman's sexual purity and doesn't hold men to the same standard. I believe as Christians, we should be gospel-based people. And if someone has committed a sexual sin in their past and they've repented of that sexual sin, whether they're man or woman, we should see them as Christ sees them, as God sees them. Because through the gospel, God transfers the purity of Jesus Christ onto that person who's repented and received his grace through faith. As 1 Corinthians 10 31 says, Christ made us right with God. He made us pure and holy and he freed us from sin. Therefore, as the scriptures say, if you want to boast, boast only about the Lord. Where worldly men and Christian godly men should diverge is how they treat women who are seeking to be sexually selective, meaning they're trying to not have premarital sex and they're trying to be relationally selective and sexually selective. And a worldly man is gonna to try to break that woman down and get what he wants no matter what. And a godly man is obviously going to try to respect that woman's sexual ethic because he shares that sexual ethic. He has the same goal as her and together they're going to try to honor Christ by uh, not committing premarital sex in dating and waiting until marriage to enjoy that beautiful gift. All that to say, my main point here is to highlight that men do find it very attractive and they're drawn to women who are selective in their relationships. If you are a woman who will date anyone who pursues her, that is often going to decrease the chances of you meeting someone that you want to marry because that person is going to feel less like you are actually interested in them because you said yes to so many other people. So it's very difficult when you don't reject men who you know you're not going to marry because then the guy you would want to marry is going to struggle to know if you really love him and value him because you're saying yes to every pursuit. I'm not saying this is fully right, but generally speaking, men are more concerned with a woman's past and women are more concerned with a man's future. The more boyfriends you have in your life, the less the next guy is gonna wanna be your boyfriend. Now, I think Christian men should obviously be held to the same standard, but the fact is I don't think as many Christian women have that same desire as men to be with a man that hasn't dated so many women. Women are not as concerned with a man's past. They're more concerned on where he's going now. Is he on track now? Is he gonna be loyal now? Is he have a good job now? Will he be a good provider in the future? Men aren't thinking that way. They're oftentimes thinking about the past because they're thinking that's the most, the best predictor of the future. So if you wanna get married one day to a godly man, do your best to minimize dating when it's unnecessary. Just to be totally clear here, I'm not saying that it's wrong for a woman to date if she needs to date to figure out if a guy is the one. If a guy is mad at you for dating to figure that out, and he's like, why did you date that man in your past? You shouldn't have dated him. That's ridiculous. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that if you don't need to date guys, then don't. If you know you're not gonna marry that guy, don't date that guy because it's definitely keeping other guys away from you. And number four, affectionate. I'm certainly not advocating for any type of sinful signs of affection or you know that promiscuous, seductive type of affection. I'm not talking about that. What I am saying is that men want to know that the woman they're with is happy with them. 
when they feel like they will always disappoint this woman, it just makes them want to go the other direction. A man wants to know that it's possible to make her happy and that she is happy with him. And again, he just avoids the person or the woman that makes him feel like he's failing. Notice the first words from the woman in the book of Song of Solomon. In chapter one, verse two, she says, let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth for your love is better than wine. The man doesn't just wanna kiss the woman. He wants the woman to want him to kiss her. In most cases, a woman is looking for a man who makes her happy. However, a man is looking for a woman that he can make happy. If a man feels like he could never make this woman happy, he will avoid her. He's attracted to the woman who is happy about him being attracted to her. When he pursues, he wants the woman to let him know she likes it. Here's a video if you're a man and you're trying to find your Ruth. And here's a video if you're a woman and you're trying to find your Boaz. I'm Mark from ApplyGodsWord.com and until next time, God bless.